Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture of Ethics, Scientific Professionalism and Integrity. This subject is intended for graduate students, specifically for plant breeding majors. However, other students from other programs are also welcome. My name is Joy Hamago and I am your professor for this course. So let's start. So let's begin with some fundamentals first. These would help lay the foundation of what we will be discussing all throughout the semester. So let's start with the first fundamental concept. Every profession has a set of standards. And this is absolutely true. Whether you do a blue collar job or a white collar job or a combination of both, there would always be a set of standards and these would be very important to define the quality of the work the quality of the workers and the quality of the services extended or offered to clienteles or customers so a set of standards is like a set of criteria which may also include guidelines and policies, especially if you're talking about an organization. But often guidelines and policies are correlated to how operations are done and how management is being facilitated. But technically, many, many factors comprise what we call a set of standards for a group of people who work for one particular organization. So this set of standards is often provided by authority or agreed upon by a group of people. So that is the first fundamental concept. The second is that every individual has a set of standards. And this is again true because we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different fields of experiences. We have different systems of knowledge, learning, and influences. And somehow, even our own beliefs, these are factors that contribute to our individualistic set of standards, which influence the way we judge the way we declare what we like or dislike, the way we make decisions and choices and preferences, and even form the basis of our biases or biases. So we have to really be aware that we have different set of standards, but it is also true that there would be common denominators to our standards but there would also be a lot of differences so it's very important to remember these two things what is very challenging however is to assess the substance and basis of our standards and how we practice or leave this out or li live this out and there's also a question of how consistent are we when we deal with different kinds of people in different circumstances do we use exactly the same set of standards so these are some of the questions that i'd like us to ruminate because this would really be helpful in coming up with very interesting discussion discourses and perhaps even debate in our class throughout the semester To kickstart our discussion, let's look at this three pictures I borrowed from the internet. The photos showcase one societal issue that we have in the Philippines and it is very common. And that is the issue on begging or mendicancy. And fortunately, we are still one of the countries in the world that has a huge concern on mendicancy. But there are actually a few countries 
that have already addressed this concern successfully. A few countries like Bhutan have no more beggars in their streets because they have developed and established programs where even, wherein even the poorest of their poors are provided for and are taken care of because they would like to celebrate their human decency and dignity. But the Philippines continues to struggle with this matter. And in fact, there is actually some kind of conflict in terms of policies because in some LGUs, there would be explicit ordinances that discourage, that discourage begging. In order to not encourage societal parasitism but in other or in perhaps in most other LGUs it is not very clear at all so there is already the conflict on simple standards it is exactly this point that I have chosen this issue to illustrate that when we talk about ethics or sets of standards even for ordinary or professional matters, things can be quite complicated. So I can share with you in this lecture my own perspectives and responses when it comes to mendicancy. So when I encounter beggars in our streets, I always have a conflict of responses. So if I deal with old beggars my immediate response is always to give but a rational part of my brain would often caution me because i have had previous experiences of beggars old beggars who actually are professional beggars and have this uncanny ability to look you in the eye and make you feel so guilty when you don't give or when you just give very little it is a conflict of response for me because i often would remember my grandparents although they are already gone bless their soul but i would never i could never imagine my grandparents begging for food or money and Personally, I have this fast-forward vision of myself that when I become old and gray and frail and weak, I would never want to be begging for food or money. And that's why my immediate response is to give. But there are just some old beggars that really seem to also put you off. The other thing is the kind of mendicancy on the bottom left photo because I don't even have to think when I meet them on the streets. When ever I see people playing music and they have an open hat on the ground or even a tin can, I always give. I've never passed by a person doing that or this on the street without giving because I have this decision that they are people who are not forcing you to give but actually inviting you to give to share and in and also they would like to share back in return and even if you don't give as long as you just appreciate their music then that would be enough for them and of course my other biases would come in because I am a person who really loves music. And so, whatever kind of musician slash beggars they are, I always give. In contrast to the first example that I have shared with you. On the other hand, for the third photo, the one on the right, you can say that there would be very few instances that I gave to this types of people 
because my brain would always debate with me of course silently and internally that they are capable people that they are strong and that they actually don't have to get to 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 beg i'm sure that they have other reasons for doing what they do but that's how my brain works and whenever i give to this to them it would not be as much as what i would give to either an old person or to a playing or musician beggar so for this alone definitely it's very very complicated This next slide deals with another issue that is now very relevant to agriculture and plant breeding. The issue on food security or insecurity. So my apologies if the left photo is making you very uncomfortable, but that was actually the reality of India way back in 1943 and 1944. India was one of those countries that was hit hardest by a famine and Famine still happens in some parts of the world, but the photo of a boy and a dog on the ground close to death is something that no one of us, I believe, would ever want to see or experience in our lifetime. The word heartbreaking doesn't even describe it enough. And this picture actually makes me, or perhaps even you and many other people, question the entire systems of governments, the entire humanity for the values that we have, and the entire universe for so much unfairness happening. In contrast, the right photo would show us an abundance of food, vegetables, fruits, breads, and what else. But Rob Greenfield, the man in the photo, is actually trying to educate people about a very ethical issue that is happening in his own country he is an american and he has proven through the years how much food is being wasted in his own country so there's the issue on food wastage i am not saying that poor countries do not waste food there is also food wastage in poor countries but not as much as what is happening in the US and other developed countries as what he is trying to emphasize and to show. Because it really is making you question why waste when other people are hungry. In the US, they have beggars too. They have beggars in the streets. They have people who are homeless. But they also have some kind of a system that would assist homeless people and unemployed people but this extreme food wastage in america is something that is so questionable and makes you wonder if people and consumers and business people would understand the hard work and the resources that are being utilized when these kinds of crops and foods are being grown or prepared and that is why he is really trying to make as much as many people as he could to be aware of this very unethical issue he has a sign board on his um on the picture that says it's a ha it, it is one of his hashtags it says hashtag donate not dumb these foods are being dumped in the dumpsters that's why it's called by the way dumpster diving is when you go to big trash bins have i said that already when you go to big trash bins usually parked behind big restaurants and big grocery stores and pull out all these good stuff okay and for just two days of dumpster diving that is the harvest that rob greenfield was able to gather 
And that's a lot if those are just really thrown away into the trash bin. And you think of maybe even you. I think most people in the developing countries, there's no one who has not experienced hunger. And yeah, that's why this issue really hits close to home. I found a very interesting graphic in the internet that I think is worth sharing here for discussion. You can see a post with four directions. So respect, integrity, honesty are all very important components in the discussion on ethics. But I wonder why was it depicted as a crossroad? Why should it be a crossroad in the first place? Why can't all four be in one direction? Just like this. Integrity, honesty, respect, ethics, they go in one direction. Or you can reshuffle the order of the four elements, but they go in one direction. Do you prefer this depiction of the components and even other flavors that make up this body of science and discussion about ethics or you prefer the previous slide that i showed you that presents it in a crossroad concept let me know what you think and i'd like you to comment on it and we will discuss it in our google meet So for all subjects being taught in the university, regardless of the semester, every student is always reminded of the CMU vision and mission. So let's get this done, especially for this subject on ethics. The university's vision is to be a leading ASEAN university actively committed to the total development of people for a globally sustainable environment and humane society. Total development of people is underscored because remember that your curricular programs put an emphasis on competence. And I hope that when we think of competence, it is competence in three very major areas. Competence in knowledge, competence in skills, and competence in values. And the discussion on ethics would actually center on values but would also involve how much knowledge we know and how much skills we have all right for the mission of cmu it is to advance the frontiers of knowledge through internationalization of education and equitable access to quality education research, extension, and production for economic prosperity, moral integrity, social and cultural sensitivity, and environmental consciousness. So what is underscored in the mission is moral integrity, which is a very important discussion when we talk about ethics. So let's be reminded of the core values of the university. It is very easy to remember the core values of the university because these are just represented as acrostics. So C is for commitment to excellence. M is moral integrity as what was emphasized in the mission. And U is unity in diversity. So when we say core values, these are supposed to be the foundation of anyone who is in CMU, whether you are a student, whether you are an employee, and even when you are an alumnus or an alumna, still the core values of the university are hoped to be still solid and intact in each one of you or us. But these are very abstract statements or phrases and to really define the core values it is really best 
to have details on how to achieve this commitment and how to achieve to practice this excellence and integrity, moral integrity and uni unity and diversity. And when everything is clear, then yeah, we have a guideline, we have a, a procedure, we have what we call a reference volume to go to so that we could live out and practice our core values every day. So I mentioned the word competence in the previous slide and to understand it further, let's try to define it. From Merriam-Webster's dictionary, they defined it as the quality or state of having sufficient knowledge, judgment, skill, or strength. Having those things, then you can be called very competent or competent. Other terms, other words, equivalent or related to competence would be to have the authority, the ability, the capability, the capacity to do what is expected of you, to, to do what is expected of us. That is competence. But is competence fully equivalent to being ethical? Again, another question that we will go through, hopefully in a very dynamic um, discussion in the next few meetings. Let's take a look at these pictures I borrowed again from the internet. These are Philippine photos of roads and bridges in the country. But mind you, these are not just regular bridges and roads. These are damaged bridges and roads. Now, before we proceed, we know for a fact that our country suffers through many natural calamities almost on a regular basis. Annually, we have an average of more than 20 typhoons in the country of varying strengths and that would cause varying damage to properties and to many other things. And when we talk about infras, we, as we would always remember the professionals involved in this projects, the architects and the engineers. Okay, I pointed out this particular issue because I raised a question in the previous slide. Is competence equal to licensing or is being licensed equal to being competent? Because personally, I don't understand. Before architects and engineers can practice their profession, they have been declared and certified competent by their own schools from where they graduated. And after graduation, they work so hard on their board exams in order to get that much coveted pieces of plastics, which are called licenses, so that they could practice their profession. And to practice their profession, they usually have to bid for projects like this. So bridges and roads and other public infrastructures are government projects. And just like what we learn in research, when we make our proposals, we have to put all relevant information and knowledge that we have in the proposal. So we know what our country is when it comes to calamities. And so when we prepare the details, the budget, all those things are put into consideration. And after projects like this are done, they again get to be approved for the quality of the output and for having met the minimum standards. So there are architects and engineers involved and there are people involved who approve all these things. And yet you wonder, why do we have infrastructures like this? whose quality is very questionable. I pulled out this particular example again to illustrate that when we talk about ethics, it is really not a simple thing to just consider. That's the reason why 
we have this additional subject as a requirement it's not even an elective subject it is a compulsory required subject for plant breeding majors like you because we may not be dealing with physical infrastructures but we will be dealing with projects and developmental projects that are intended for people and for communities and as much as possible we need to have everything that we need in order to do our job the best we can so when we talk about ethics okay it's really a mind-blowing area of discussion and consideration okay at the individual level we need to always assess and review regularly our principles our honesty our sense of right and wrong our sense of fairness our understanding of what is responsibility our conscience our choices our morality our integrity how we value things and most importantly what is our understanding of the word honor yeah so these are a lot of things to ponder when we talk about ethics and that is why this subject is really exciting and also very necessary so going back to this question is being licensed the incompetent i think by now we have more clarity in our thought and the answer to this question and that's exactly one of the rationale for having this subject so this is a compulsory subject it means it's a required subject for plant breeding majors like you this is not an elective subject it is because we believe that at every level of education we need to be enriched further in the subject and discussion of ethics because apparently ethics is not a very simple matter in a simple concern so just to add more details to this i've already illustrated earlier about substandard roads bridges buildings and other infrastructures and that is of course the challenge for the professionals in the engineering architecture and other relevant disciplines on our part we have these issues on chemical advertisements in crop fields along the highway some chemical companies would pay farmers to put up their placards uh, or their signages even if actually those farmers are not using those chemicals just because the crops are really growing and are the best looking crops ever for that particular season there are stories of selling inputs not suitable to farmers needs especially the less educated farmers so short changing them in exchange for commission and profit in general when we work there are days that we may be really practicing mediocrity maybe we're just turning in passable outputs the worst case if we would just be waiting for the strike of the clock or we spend more time talking to people of non-related things instead of doing our work in terms of research there have been a lot of cases of malpractices in research so cheating improper data gathering improper data doctoring and verified conclusions and many other cases of um, practices and perhaps in every other profession there would always be these issues on ethics and again that is the reason why we need to be regularly reminded regularly reminded about matters that define the quality of our work and these are actually not just centered on our competence on how much knowledge we know and how much skills we have but on how solid is our character 
and on our value systems. Indeed, the answer to this question is really sad. Not all licensed professionals are competent and also not ethical. The College of Agriculture is a center of excellence in agriculture education. We have this distinction or recognition from the Commission on Higher Education or CHED for a long, long time. In fact, we were the earliest college to be given this recognition. Although the College of Forestry and Environmental Science and the College of Veterinary Medicine, as well as the Department of Biology are also recognized as centers of excellence for particular, for particular degree programs that they also offer. So it's a big honor for the university and practically every college and every department in the university aims to achieve that level of quality. So what is really excellence? I have to go back to the trustworthy Merriam-Webster's dictionary to find out other words that define excellence. So brilliance, distinction, greatness, superiority, supremacy, fineness, exceptionally high quality, all these are the other terms that try to further elaborate the word excellence. And this is good because excellence can be very abstract in our brains and excellence can be very subjective and relative. So it's good to have these other definitions or words that would really create a clearer idea for us on how to sustain excellence and how to practice on a daily basis. I remember Aristotle whose famous, word whose famous words would be excellence is a habit so it has to be practiced daily but there is a question that i have raised think about two years ago and it keeps really bothering me the question on why the emphasis only in competence and excellence in the academic programs let me repeat that why the emphasis only in competence and as in the academic programs. So why not honor and excellence both? That is my question several years ago. Because honor is the moral compass. We have discussed in the previous slides people and professions whose excellence have been certified but perhaps the moral compass and the moral code is still on a shaky ground. So what is honor? It is related to integrity and having that honesty and being truthful and being reliable. It's having a good name or reputation. It's having a keen sense of ethical conduct. It is having respect and admiration by the people around you. It's having decency and uprightness and going back to that very important word, being trustworthy. So I remember watching the last lecture of Professor Winnie Monsod of UP Diliman and her last lecture before retirement was actually recorded by her students. And she had emphasized on the importance of honor first before excellence, which means that the order by which the two words should be placed actually has a great significance. So this is what she said, although I have paraphrased it. Every person should have a solid foundation and self-core of honor first before aiming to be excellent or brilliant in his or her pursuits. You don't want to be great at what you do, but very dishonest and a big cheat. Yeah, 
those are very powerful words. Very true. That perhaps, and I am actually proposing this, that maybe Chad would reconsider renaming all these COEs into CHEs, Centers of Honor and Excellence in Agriculture Education, for example. Centers of Honor and Excellence for Forestry Education. Because exactly if we focus only on capability and skills and competency exactly many people can be very competent they have the knowledge they have the skills but they don't necessarily have the right values or the moral compass so put the honor first before excellence again i'd like to read what i have paraphrased from professor Rubini monson every person should have a solid foundation and self-core of honor first before aiming to be excellent or brilliant in his her pursuits you don't want to be great at what you do but very dishonest and a big cheat so going back to the college of agriculture it would be nice that soon or sooner we would be recognized as the center of honor and excellence in agriculture education. That sounds definitely better. And that is also something that is really good to look forward to. So after all those previous slides, we finally come to the definition, to the formal definition of ethics. And this is the simplest definition that I have chosen for the class. So ethics is a code or a set of standards of conduct or social norms that prescribes behavior, the sense of right and wrong, and our total package of this entire set or code is contributed from many different sources from our homes from schools from churches from friends from books from movies that we watch from all the other influences and experiences that we have gone through and all together these would form our ethics and that is why we say that it is actually very important to update on ethics because we would have new experiences and new understanding and new realizations as we go through life and if we are just having the right mindset then yeah we would really be enriched and we would become better adept at setting our standards of conduct so just to put us on the same page on the other terms on our subject title let's just have a reminder of this definition so scientific is unbiased logical systematic and methodical professionalism is the consistency of the quality of work that is from mr tiger or tigger regardless of the challenges in the workplace personal concerns etc and integrity of course is related to honesty and uprightness and honor so all these four terms combined in our course title which is ethics scientific professionalism and integrity what we will be discussing this semester is indeed a very tall order but also very challenging and very useful and i'd like to remind everyone that we are all whips we are all work in progress and because that is the that is exactly the truth then we should keep trying to get better there's something scary when we also talk about ethics and that is the issue of individualism or individualistic ethics what does that mean it means having the concept of right or wrong, good or bad, virtue or vice, based only on the person's judgment. 
I'll give you a few seconds to digest that. Based only on the person's judgment, what could be right for me is wrong for you and vice versa. And there are a lot of funny stories and examples to illustrate this concept. In Filipino communities, it's very typical to see signages that say, Bawal umihi dito or bawal magtapo ng basura dito. And those are very clear and very simple terms to follow. But you would wonder why there are some individuals that intentionally throw their trash where trash is prohibited and where and where they pee where it is not encouraged to pee. So something kind of weird in our brains or in our judgment and sometimes I use the term and forgive me if I would offend anyone I used the phrase a short-circuited brain because those are very clear simple terms yet intentionally being violated by some people and yeah that makes all this discussion about ethics really interesting and that is the entire reason why it's very important to have feedback evaluation validation and affirmation okay on a regular basis because there could be a lot of other things that come into play when we make decisions that would require our moral code our assessment of our moral standards Accordingly, the simplest test of our ethics is what we do when no one is around. And the guiding question for all of us is that, will we still do the right thing? Yeah, exactly. So for example, on the issue of washing our faces, we have been told that it is appropriate to wash our face before we go to bed but I don't think that that is an ethical issue it becomes an ethical issue however when you claim to always wash your face before you go to bed when there are nights that you don't okay because now it's a matter of honesty and truthfulness And many of the things that we actually learned about ethics had been taught to us early in primary school. That honesty is the best policy and that cleanliness is next to godliness. But in this case, I don't think it's literal cleanliness. I think it is cleanliness of our conscience is really next to godliness. So let me end our lecture by showing you the final slide for the final slide in our first lecture let me share about Mulan very briefly so the beautiful lady on the right is Mulan the actress who played Mulan in the new movie I have seen the animated version many years back and it's a beautiful story in this new movie there are some new songs and one particular song has one very good line that I think is very relevant to our subject, which is ethics. So this line goes, Underneath my armor, am I loyal, brave, and true? So if you know the story of Mulan, <laughs> if you know the story of Mulan, there is no question how loyal she is to her family and to her friends. There is no question how brave she is. In fact, she's a very good warrior. But whenever she's alone, she questions herself how honest and how truthful she is. Okay? Because she pretended to be a man to replace her dad. Her dad was um, disabled. And she could not bear the thought of him going to war and dying. 
So she left with her father's sword and represented the family and pretended to be a man. Don't forget that. So the moment that she finally revealed herself to be a woman was the time that she was fully free of the burden of dishonesty. And by then, she performed even better. She was even a better warrior than she was before. And the entire sense of this story is actually about honor. Honor for the family and honor of the individual. And I'd like us to have this final thought before I end um, yeah, this lecture. And if you have questions and clarification, let's discuss in our G or you can comment below. And I'll see you in air quotes in our next lectures. Have a good day, everyone, and just be blessed.